I keep getting interrupted and I need an adult. Okay, seriously though, I keep getting interrupted. Thanks, keep popping up and it stops recording. I need an actual recording device and so thanks, it'd be much better that way if I got an actual recording device, but that's not going to happen because that costs this. And I don't have that for right now. I'm poor. Anyways, um, what? Okay. Uh, distractions. Distractions. So, as I was saying earlier, I don't understand how people have breakdowns, and I mean, I went off on, I was talking about Team Four Star, and how awesome they are, and Dragon Ball Z, and I was talking about, I went off on a tangent on car mechanics, and people just looking at other people and judging them for, like, being stupid, like car mechanics women, because they have tits and twat, and they must be stupid or something like that. I went on several tangents, because that's what I do. I just go off and I go, blah, 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 blah. It drives me insane. But the, the true essence is, the whole point is, I don't understand how people can't hold it together. I mean, if you can't control a situation, then what is the point of having a breakdown? That's that's my whole question. I mean, I just, I don't get it. If you can't control it, then you're just going to stress yourself out more by freaking out over a situation. And I know there gets to be a point when there's so much shit that you just can't pile through it anymore and you have to do it. But I mean, for every little drop and every little thing, and I, I guess, I mean, I've been through really bad situations. I've had really bad situations happen to me. I mean, those of uh, the people that know me that watch this, they understand, and I will probably get into those situations that I've been into l later. And right now I'm getting used to the YouTube video and getting used to the YouTube audience, and I will, I will get there. I have secrets. I have skeletons. No, not really. Well, everybody has skeletons, but no, I mean, I've had situations really bad that happened to me, and I just took it as a personal challenge. I got over it, and so it's like, what else are you going to throw at me? Go ahead. I don't care. I got over that. I'll get over this. I'll get over whatever you want to throw at me. I can do it. Whatever. And I just... I, I don't know if it's because I have a supportive system. I'm lucky to have that kind of thing, you know. I mean, but I, I've dealt with the situations on my own where nobody knew. I didn't tell anybody. I dealt with it on my own. I mean, but I've, you know, you can find kindness in strangers. We had, when I was going through, I would say one of the worst situations. The worst situation I've, like, been in so far that was extremely difficult for me to get over. And, um, we had a Icelandic playwright. It was during my college years. We had an Icelandic playwright come, um, Jonas Jonasson, and he was a famous radio talk show host, and somehow I found a kindred spirit in him, and he helped me through a situation. He, he helped me. He didn't even really know what was going on, but there was just something about him, and it, and he did. I mean, even after he went back, we still communicated, and he died this last year, which is why I'm kind of tearing up a little, but he was such an amazing person and everything, and I mean, his play that he wrote, Glass House, was dealing with his alcoholism. Because he had had that. And so, I mean, everybody has tough situations. You just have to find a way to deal with it that doesn't consist of breaking down. Because when you're in a professional setting, you can't do that. Especially in something like medical field or anything like that. You can't have those breakdowns. You have to be strong. I mean, it's, it might sound cold of me saying this. But you need to understand that your patients will probably die. They may die on you. I mean, I, I dealt with a patient that um, I took care of them every night and then it moved down to about once a month how they had it going. And, I mean, I saw, when, when I last saw him, the last month that I saw him, I was like, oh, I saw the ends of 
the in stages of life going on and I was like I'm not going to see him but I mean it's a part of life death is a part of life everybody's dying from the same thing which is life when we are born we are going to die so everybody's going to die it's going to happen you make them as comfortable as possible you don't put onto them your issues and situations I mean I rolled my ankle and was gimping, and I mean gimping horribly by the end of the day. I mean, I was in so much pain, and they'd be like, oh my god, I don't need you doing that. I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm good. It's cool. And I'm like, oh dear god, the pain. You know, I um tore some tendons and everything. It sucked. I'm still healing. That's my gimpness that I was talking about. But you can't, you keep going. You don't let them know that kind of stuff just because you're gimping around and they start to worry. Be like, it's cool. All I have to do is put it up and put some ice on it and I'll be back in no time. And they're like, you sure? And you're like, yes, don't worry. I'm cool. How are you feeling? Because, I mean, they spent their whole entire lives, as I've explained. I mean, they've worked. A lot of these people went through the, you know, they, they were in the World War. They had family members who were in the First World War. I mean, they've been through so much. They worked their entire life. They went through the the the, the Great Depression. I, I drew a blank there. Sorry, pardon me. I was like, oh, the the dust, the dust fall, the bull, 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 the bull, the bull, the bull, the bull, the bull. Anyways, but you know, they've been through crazy stuff, and so I mean. They don't want to hear about your small issues, and it might be a lot to you, but you have to hold it in, because they do care so much about you, and they don't need, they don't need that, you know? I just, I just, I guess I don't understand, because freaking out doesn't help a situation. It makes you feel worse, and, I mean, you can actually make yourself sick. I mean, it's, you can, it's a psychosomatic sickness where you worry yourself sick. You're physically ill. I mean, I remember once, and I don't even know what, but I was a little kid and everything, and on, like, every weekend for, like, two weeks, and I'm holding up three fingers, for two weeks, or, or three weeks, I don't even remember. It was a few weeks, but, like, every weekend on cue, I would, like, vomit until I was dry heaving. And then my mom was like, you're making yourself sick. And as soon as she said that, I no longer had that issue. And then I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. Why would I make myself sick on a weekend? Why not make myself dry heave on a Monday so I don't have to go to school? Ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. On, on a Saturday. Really? I'm not going to enjoy my weekend? I don't even, I don't even remember. It was so long ago. Like, I just barely remember. I just remember, like, vomiting until I was sick of mom being like, oh, you're being a psychosomatic. And I'm like, say it right or right and she's like, psychosomatic. Okay. But yeah. I, I don't know. Perhaps I'm strange. Perhaps I, like I said, I've been lucky enough to have support. My nose itches. You guys catch me itching my nose a lot. I'm sorry. My little nose. My broken nose. My broken little nose. Okay. Distractions. I'm telling you. I go a little. Mm.